Hey everybody, it's Nick here. Yep, still have blue hair. We'll see what happens next with that. It is fading quite a bit. Anyways, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, something within Power Pages that if you're working on Power Pages projects, of course, where you probably are using Liquid if you're extending beyond the regular forms and views and those types of things. Um, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about site markers. Site markers to me are one of those things that really don't get a lot of attention, yet they're super powerful. And uh, my friend Erika actually pointed out something to me that is something about site markers that I didn't know that I'm going to share with you today. So first off, let's take a little look at our homepage here. And I want to talk a little bit about liquid condition, conditional uh, formatting. So really liquid is a markup language. It allows you to dynamically show different things on your Power Pages site. Of course, there's a whole bunch of different tags and objects, which will talk to Dataverse and surface that data so you don't necessarily have to use lists and forms. That's a, kind of a topic for another day. Today, I'm really just going to talk about the bare bone basics. So here's my homepage. If I wanted to add a piece of liquid code, really just to say hello to the user who's logged in or to hello stranger, we could easily add that liquid code. Now, we can't do that from the design studio. What we'll do is we'll click on this little magic button here that says edit code. And this is going to open up the Visual Studio Code editor directly from your design studio. All right, so now we're in Visual Studio Code for the web. And that's really powerful that we can actually go in and edit this code. This is one of my favorite features of Power Pages that came out in the last year or so is to be able to edit code directly using VS Code for the web. It's almost as powerful as desktop, but there's still a few things missing. We still can't create assets in here and a few other little things, but for the most part, we can do quite a bit. So anyways, I have my home page code here. This is the cool thing about Power Pages and using something like the Visual Studio Code Editor. If you're comfortable doing things like HTML and CSS, well, of course, you're used to using code editors like VS Code or probably a few others, but then we can actually modify and manipulate our pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of code and I'm going to paste it here into my home page. All right, I have my liquid code. Now, of course, we could also get uh, our good friend uh, Copilot to help us out with this. Today, we're going to do it old school. We're going to actually type in or cut and paste our code. That's what really development's all about anyway, right? So here we go. I've added some liquid code in here. Um, pretty much says if user, meaning if a user is logged in, it's going to say hello. And within these brackets, it's going to use that user.full name. It's going to display that. And then we have else, just hello stranger if it's an anonymous user and an end if here. And that's just within the divs. We can clean that up just a little bit. And basically when we see squiggly stuff, that means there's gonna be some sort of action or evaluation happening. So like the if is gonna checking at the user. And if it's the two brackets like that, basically means it's just gonna display some data here. That's you know a lot more to liquid, but those are some of the basics. And probably a lot of you are used to liquid, so you don't need me explaining that. Anyways, I'm gonna hit save. I'm just going to save that file back into Dataverse. Now let's take a look at this uh, on our website. All right, back in Design Studio, I'm going to hit Sync. What Sync is going to do is going to take those changes that are in Dataverse and display them on my Design Studio. Here at the Design Studio, we see a Hello John Doe. It's kind of a placeholder. Let's actually take a look and see what this is going to look like on our actual website. And what's happening on my homepage here, it says, Hello Stranger, because I am not signed in. If I go in Sign In, going to use Azure AD and we see here it says hello Nick Dolman pretty simple that's liquid code so what we want to do is a use case came up in a project we're working on where we want to display information on our home page depending if the user is logged in or not if the user is logged in we want to give a whole bunch of different layouts and a bunch of information and if they're not logged in we want to give them a whole completely different set of information now a lot of you are probably saying yeah no problem you just showed us how to use the if else. What we could do is we could put in static text or we could actually use content snippets in our homepage and completely display two different sets of information. That's all good, but then that really becomes a little bit tedious to modify or to work on those two different sets. It really will mess up our design studio a little bit. So here's what our strategy is. I'm once again in the design studio and what I've done is I've created two different home pages. One for the red team, one for the blue team. So basically this is for anybody who is not authenticated or they are authenticated. They're going to see this home page here. Um, of course, we have our a little bit bigger here. So we see it's a bit of text. And then I have a completely alternate home page, which is for the users that will either be anonymous or sign in. I kind of got a little bit backwards here, but anyways, about the red team. 
two completely different home pages that a maker or someone who's managing the website can go in and modify and work on these directly in the design studio. But what we want to do as developers, we want to be able to strategize, basically show one set of information versus another. So this is the cool thing that Alika showed me and I'm going to show you as well. So I'm going to go back to the home page here and I'm going to go in and back to my Visual Studio Code editor. So I'm back in Visual Studio Code editor. Here's my code and I'm going to put in some other code here and I'm putting in a site marker. So basically I just put in href, that's standard HTML and here's that site marker. It's, it's the two um, uh, squigglies there going site markers and home and So what this basically is doing is saying, go to that site marker record and extract the URL. So you're probably wondering what exactly is a site marker? So basically a site marker allows you to designate a page. And then if you use a site marker in your code, no matter where that page moves in the hierarchy, that site marker is going to keep on working. Let's actually take a quick look at our power pages management app to show you where you set up and create site markers. So here I am in the Power Pages management app, which of course, as a quick review, is the model driven app to which you as a developer or a maker can go in and modify the metadata that's used to display your web page. Now you can do a lot in the design studio, but you still need to use the Power Pages management app for fine tuning a little things, including creating site markers. So I have the site markers on the side here. We could just click new. I've got a couple created. Here's that home and non. I'm going to open that up just to show you the record. I can give it any name I want. Now it is case sensitive when you paste it in using liquid. I've chosen my website and then I've linked to the actual web page record that I want it to display. So no matter where this page moves, this site marker will just follow it and display that if I have that link there. So let's now go quickly back to Visual Studio Code and once again, take a look at our site marker code. So back in Visual Studio Code, again, here's that site marker. Remember home and on, again, another reminder, case sensitive. And I see site markers, the name of the site marker dot URL, meaning this is gonna be the URL. Let's take a look to see how this renders on our web page. So here I am on my home page. Again, I have that hello, cause that's the first bit of liquid code. And then I see this hyperlink to the anonymous homepage and I'm clicking on that, that is going to take me to that red team page that I created. So that's really site markers in a nutshell. Or is it? This is something that's really cool. I found out something else about site markers. Rika, like I said, she told me about it. It's really cool. I'm going to show it to you now. And like I said, I was going to show it to you five minutes ago, but now I'm really going to show it to you. All right. So if you remember our use case, what we wanted to do is show the different home page, depending if the user is logged in or not. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up a little bit of this code in my homepage. We don't need this anymore. Instead of hello username, I'm going to put in this piece of magic. Check this out. So here I'm going to put in site markers and basically site markers, home auth. But look at this dot ADX copy. What this will do on the site marker, this will show that web page copy on a page. Isn't that cool? I didn't know you could do that. Now also notice it is using the ADX underscore. This is you, this will be used for both the standard model and enhanced data model. Um, I'm basically, it's just making sure the code stays compatible. Um, if you try to use the new field name, which is I think MS uh, PP underscore copy, that won't work. I did try it out. Uh, maybe there's a reason if anybody knows, definitely make a comment. Um, and I'm just going to put the other site marker, uh, home um, auth. And the other one is home and on. Uh, actually, no, we want this one to be home auth and the other one home and on. This is what happens when people are watching me code like all of you at home right now. All right, we got this home auth, home and on. So basically, let's just go walk through this code. If there's a user logged in, show the home auth site marker using ADX copy, meaning it's going to show that web page or it's going to show a completely different web page. Um, by using that dot ADX copy. So this is not in the docs. If it if uh, I was still working there, I definitely added in. Uh, definitely pretty cool. So anyways, I'm saving this. Let's take a look at our website. All right, so I've signed into my website. I'm already logged in and look at it's showing that particular web page, the blue team web page. Now, if I were to sign out, boom, it showed me the red team page. 
that's really cool. I can actually show different web pages based on this logical, uh, on the logic, and then also use that site marker code to show different web pages. I know I'm a geek. These are little things, but I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. But all of this to be said, we did run into another problem is what happens if we have liquid in these pages that we want to show? So here I'm in the design studio. I'm going to homepage A. Now I could go and add a list or a form or anything else. That's going to add a liquid tag to this. I'm just going to make this pretty simple. I'm just going to go into, again, Visual Studio Code, kind of stick into the whole developer theme here. We're already into some source code and whatnot. Now, again, we might not expect our regular website admins to be updating liquid code, but there might be, like I said, things in there like a form or a list or something like this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to in the text area. Um, let's just expand this. Whoops, Copilot. Yeah, love you, but not right now. We're going to go here and I'm going to add uh, some more liquid code in here, basically just to see, just to kind of demonstrate what's going to happen. So I'm going to put in some code. If page title contains home, it does. I put that in the page title. It's going to say the title contains the word home. Just a little piece of liquid code, like I said, Liquid code could be representing a list or a form or a few other things. So I just wanted to give a very simple example. I'm going to save that file now, and then I'm going to go back to the browser and let's take a look to see what happens. All right, I'm in the home page. Oh, I'm actually here where I edit it. You see the title contains the word home. It's actually rendering that liquid in the design studio. If I now go back to my home page that has that conditional logic, uh, we don't see much here because it's not actually going to show it's an advanced component. I'm going to hit the preview button and see what this now looks like. And so I'm back on the home page here. It did bring up the right home page, but look at this. It showed the liquid code. It did not render that liquid code. So of course this is going to cause a problem. And now we're kind of stuck. Oh, can we not use site markers dot ADX underscore copy to display an entire web page on a site? Ah, that kind of stinks. However, once you start digging in the docs, the answer lies there. So let's take a look to see how we can fix our code. All right, we're back in Visual Studio. So here we are, if user site marker dot adx copy and the other one, the home and auth, home and on. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to type in a very special pipe. A pipe is a way that's gonna filter that information through something and we're gonna use liquid. And we're also gonna put that for here and here, which basically is saying, hey, there's liquid code dump it out as liquid code. Now that liquid, of course, will be able to show the HTML, the CMS on the images, or C CMS, CSS, all that stuff. We're gonna save this now using that liquid filter and let's take a look. All right, back in the page and hey, look at this. The code actually rendered correctly. I know it was a very simple, obscure piece of liquid code, but the fact that it all rendered using that liquid filter is great. All right, so we just bombarded you or I just bombarded you with a lot of information, but Basically, using Liquid, we can plunk it everywhere. We can do a lot of amazing things. Site markers, more than just URL. Site markers are pretty powerful, but the fact that you could actually do .adx underscore copy as a way to show the copy from another website or that content into another web page, another website web page, that's pretty cool. And then also finally to fix up the Liquid, it can render the Liquid if we filter it through the Liquid tag. So. Just a couple little tips there. Hopefully, if you run into something in your project where you might need this, I hope you found that helpful. Have a great day.